Welcome everybody to the Zoom meeting. It's been a while. We missed a month and so it's nice to see people back together again. Uh, we're going to uh, talk with Devine Dial from WPVM in Asheville, North Carolina. She's going to reprise her, there she is. <laughs> She's going to reprise her presentation on um, the live streaming with Facebook as a really good promotion tool. Um, and then uh, we might talk about some other tools also like hosting if we have time and just because it's such a big world using social media and it's nice to break it down and I actually got to use uh, uh, knowledge this past week or so when we did the live caucus for in Iowa and it, it, w it went really well um, did have one little hiccup which was that the phone the phone didn't work, like we couldn't hear the phone conversations, which was inter inter interesting, but there's always something that you get hooked up with. Uh, but the, the video turned out really nicely, and I really enjoyed it, so I'll um, we'll be glad to share what Naveen has to say today. Um, and then also, if we have time, Ursula is going to talk about uh, our experience with the, the Kindest website with it with a um, promotion and or a fun drive. drive is a nice way to do it and and then of course at the end if anyone has any questions and um, it's funny watching Ursula in this live shot <laughs> as you're walking. Going down the steps is just <laughs> yes. like a, a born film going on over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what we've been doing um, to reiterate from our other uh, presentations of people will mute our mics presenter to do their presentation. So things simple. And then afterwards we can ask questions, of course. And for people who don't have a camera, there is a chat button. It should be at the bottom of your screen. Um, you're welcome to type things if you have a question or a comment or anything. And um, I think that's it. So Davine, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so hi everybody. I'm Davine, and I'm in. And uh, uh, it's, we have a lot of disturbance going on. Yeah, <laughs> we'll give Ursula a minute to set up here. So she can get set up for the presentation. It's hard to disturb. It'll be better. How you doing, Ursula? You all set? Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Maybe you should put uh, your, we'll put our, our mute button mute button on so Devine doesn't get glitched. I'm getting a lot of feedback. So, um, let's see. Are you, am I there still? Yes. Okay, yeah, good. You're there. All right, so um, I started live streaming actually about 10 years ago using, uh, uh, using the information and the experience that I got from our local uh, public educational and government station. And so I became aware of the um, how to do it basically. So as time has gone by and technology has changed a lot and gotten a lot swifter, I have incorporated live video into some of our programs. Not all of our show hosts want to do li uh, live video to social media, but the ones that do really like it and they really, uh, and their guests really like it. We've not had uh, hardly any guests come on that was not delighted to be able to be uh, streaming locally to streaming uh, to social media and it really helps for your show hosts when they have a guest that that guest has an active social media program too that way you can increase the reach and engagement of the video uh, based on how many people they know and how many people share their information so I'm going to switch over to my to my PowerPoint And the main question is why use social media? 
Uh, and in, uh, I'm sure you're all aware that uh, traditional media is- I don't think the PowerPoint is showing. It's showing here, let me- Is it, is, uh, are other people seeing it? Um, I've got share screen going. I don't know what's happening. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay. Is it showing now? Yeah. Okay, good. So media is going through a paradigm shift and uh, moving away from traditional ways of getting your information. Uh, and, you know, and we've certainly gone through this in the past from town criers to how people used to communicate. Um, and social and community radio can take advantage of this because uh, in our town, and I'm sure in a lot of other places, um, tradition, uh, our radio st the stations that are here have stopped doing all of the local programming. Our local newspaper, when I moved to Asheville uh, um, 30 years ago, had 37 reporters. Now they're down to seven or six or seven. And the independent media, print media here is having a really difficult time. Their, their uh, weekly uh, publication is a third of what it used to be. And they are starting to really beg for money for, in the community, partly because their, their revenues, their advertisement re revenue is way down. So uh, social media or community, uh, Community radio is in a position where, uh, since we're local, we can tap into or we can seize the day for local uh, sharing of political meetings, uh, community affairs events, town halls, local music events, and so uh, it's it's the technology has gotten so much easier to work with and i'll show you at the end of the powerpoint the uh the easiest way to do it and then i'll show i i think i've show, uh, i've got a um, slide on here that shows what we do in the studio so um as i said public affairs live streaming political forums and musical events some of the ways that stations can increase awareness of the station's programming its brand and share the content to local community in a broader way than our 100 uh, watts airwaves give us. And for WPVM, which is us, uh, the best response we've gotten in using social media, because there's Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, and you know, in the past there was MySpace, so far, Facebook is the one for us that we get the best mileage out of. And we do a combination of uh, just general um, live streaming of um, interviews and musical events. But some of the things that I know are gonna be really popular, I'll boost them for 10 to $15 uh, for a five day period. I budget approximately $100 a month to do uh, boosting to help raise awareness of the station and the people who come on. And sometimes I spend a little less than that. And sometimes, depending upon what it is, I'll spend more. But the advantage is you can target your listeners in a way that you weren't really able to do before with advertising in general. Uh, in the past, when you advertise to print media, magazines or radio or uh, on-air media, you were basically um, doing a shotgun effect. Whereas with social media, because you can control who and where you want that video to go, you can target certain specific audiences that as time goes by and you learn about the tech, the, you learn from the insights that Facebook gives you, you learn who your audience is, you learn where your audience is and what the subjects are that they're interested in. And so uh, Facebook is really excellent for gathering a lot of information. And there's a learning curve to learning how to use that information 
um, I'll show you in the next slide, um, in one of the next slides, uh, how you go and find the statistics that Facebook has for you. But the more likes you have and the more followers you have, the more action you have uh, raising awareness of your station in the community. And uh, reach and engagement spikes with video. So video is your best use of going to social media. You can put up graphics with uh, some good con uh, text content, but just plain text content doesn't do very well. So it's gotta be graphics or, and if it's not graphics, if you go uh, to video, that's video is going to give you the best bang for the efforts that you're putting in. Uh, according to um, some of the experts that I've studied, reach and engagement, and reach and engagement are the two things that you're trying to accomplish uh, when you're doing um, a social media program. Reach means how many people saw, how many people's news feed did that video or that uh, text or, or graphic go in front of their eyes? and how many people engage with it is the other criteria that you're looking for. And the generally accepted um, ratio is we have um, 3,000, so uh, we have 3,600 followers, but my graphic here says this, if you have 3,000 followers, you wanna reach 9,000 people, or you wanna have 9,000 reaches happen on that particular uh, posts that you've got up. And so on a weekly basis, Facebook will send out how you did on your reach and engagement. And this past week, so we have 3,600 people who are following us. And we have another 30, a little over 3,500 likes. So between the two, we've got around 7,000. But our reach was 17,000 and our engagement was 2,600 uh, in engagement. So um, that's not bad. It's not exactly uh, three times one, but it's getting there. And if anybody has questions, I think we can do questions at the end. So this is our Facebook page, and this is how it looks. This is the last video that we did. Video by WPVM was a uh, primary political forum, and it is, and, and when you do a uh, political um, video, it's going to attract the attention of all of your movers and shakers in town. So it's, it's, a, it's a, 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 among the other things of sharing the information that the candidates have to say, it raises awareness of your station as someone putting out important information for the community to use. And the insights that you can get are, well, I'm gonna have to see if I can, it's, uh, there's, there's notification, there's up here at the top, the overhead menu of the, of the uh, graphic of the station on the far right, you see more, well, you, uh, we're covered up by our, our participants here, but on the second option down is insights. So you wanna go to those insights and that's where you begin to learn uh, all about your demographics, uh, which kinds of posts that you put up are really popular, which ones are not set popular, but they still need to be going out. And um, so, th and that's where you really start to learn how to use the algorithms and the information that social media is, uh, that Facebook is giving you to your advantage. And so these are, you, when, you, when, you're, when you have your own page, you have the option of following other pages too. These are other pages in the community that are radio related or in some way related that we follow just to see how we're doing in comparison to theirs as far as engagement is concerned. And you can see number five is us, WPVM. At the top is one of the most popular um, non-commercial stations in the region. They have 36,000 followers. 
but their engagement last week was 7,800. And our engagement was, was if a, a ratio is much higher than theirs, because I'm always working the, working the um, uh, posts so that we keep our engagement rate up there. And so, but what you can do is click on each one of these uh, links. Uh, for, for example, if you clicked on WNCW, you would see what their top uh, videos were. So that gives you, so Facebook gives you a way to kind of go spy on your, on the people that you're keeping track of or that you're in competition with and see what they're doing and um, try to do better than they're doing. So follow pages that are relevant to your mission. And so here's a graphic of our reach and uh, the number of people, uh, or, or not or the reach, but the um, uh, statistics for a year of minutes viewed and three second uh, video views. And in our, what our goal is, is to just raise awareness of the brand, of the station's brand, and raise awareness of our show host programs. So we consider 211,000 uh, in our community of 90,000 pretty good in continually keeping our brand and our station in, in the uh, uh, ubiquitous in the Facebook um, news feeds for people in our area. And this then, you, so again, with the statics, stats from uh, Facebook, you can start to see what were your most popular shows, who, 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 who saw, who got seen the most, River Gagarian, which is a really popular musician in town. The, the video got viewed um, or passed over people's, or in it, the reach was 3,400. And you can go down and you can see uh, kind of a cross section of what kind of results you're gonna you're getting from your programming uh, at based on Facebook's uh, statistics when you go into those insights. And then this is one that uh, this is a show that we did for NC North Carolina Service, which is a group of people. It's a organization that gives support to. Uh, returning veterans and their families and we we are partnering with them so we can give them a printout which is what this is for them to go to their supporters and let them know what kind of engagement and reach is going on with the programming that they're putting out and and showing some hard figures that they are doing uh, a lot of um, important work within the community that gets the message out to veterans and returning veterans and their families for benefits and services that are available in the area. And then one other statistic that you can get from um, social media is what's called engagement rate. So in the upper right hand corner says engagement rate and you see those percentages there. You want, your, you want to keep it like right, right, right around 5% or higher. Some here you see are better and some are, are less. And uh, the ones that do better, those basically are the ones that people are paying a lot more attention to. But that gives you a little more information about your programming that you're putting out and who's, who's tapping in or how people are tapping into it. And so, for example, River Gregarian was the most popular um, show on that slide a couple of ones back. And so here is them performing in the studio. That this was live streaming his um, event. And on the right, you see the statistics of 5,800, 5,888 people were reached and there were 460 engagements. And I know this might be a lot of uh, kind of heavy stuff to kind of consider, but it takes a while for it to absorb in and for you to feel, or for me, for me it was um, a while before I really started seeing the significance of how I could 
use this and how I could use it to um, uh, increase the uh, reach of our show host shows, but also have the information there for if and when we start to go for grants or underwriting, we have some statistics to show uh, the, the whoever our potential grantor or underwriter is about the effectiveness of our programming. And here's another graphic of that particular uh, interview and a little more information about um, the statistics that were available. So here is an example of the equipment that I used to have to carry around to do live streaming. You see, I've got a great big camera there. I've got two wireless mic uh, receivers hooked onto the top. I've got a computer, I've got a mixer, and what you can't see is I had four or five mics hooked into that mixer that I had to set up before. And so as time goes by and things have changed a lot, now the equipment is much easier to tote around. This link here where it says Mevo Camera Tutorial, y'all can link, y'all can click on that link at, uh, at your leisure. And this is a training tutorial that we give our, our new show host to teach them how to use the camera. And this is the camera that I'm using in the studio. It's called Mevo. And it can work as three cameras. Once you, uh, you, you control it by a, an, a device like a smartphone or an iPad, and um, it gives great video. We do have a way of hooking it into our soundboard so that we get board quality soundboard when those live videos are going out. The other option is this little guy that goes into a smartphone. And here's one right here. So it's great if you uh, don't wanna invest a lot of money in um, a five or $600 Mevo camera setup. If you have a smartphone, you can invest in the little Shure mic that gives really good audio. And you can be very nimble. So if you're out at a business meet, if you're out at a community meeting and something really good happens, you can walk up with your iPhone and this mic and capture a nice little um, a high quality sound interview. So, and this fits in your pocketbook. So it's it's easy to tote around. And at the bottom of this slide, you'll see the Asheville City Council candidate forum that I just did last week and, and that one I did use my iPhone and this little um, Shure MV88 mic and so you can view that and get an idea of the quality of the sound that went out. And so I just wanna communicate that that is one of your best options and I think that's the end of the, uh, yeah, that's the end. So any questions? Uh, I'll start. Uh, we um, recently did the the caucus the caucus night with the Mevo camera and the iPad, and it went really really nicely. I was telling Devine earlier that I really enjoyed that I because it has the three camera feature. Right. And, um, if if the the hosts were there for five hours, so they couldn't really leave, so I could focus on one face while someone had to sneak a bite of pizza and then I could go over that face when the other person needed to sneak a bite of pizza or go to the bathroom or whatever they needed to do. So that was really cool. And um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about bandwidth. That was a kind of a, uh, so it, that was a big issue that we had to deal with. We, uh, we had so much, what's that? Did you have drop off? Yeah, well, we, we knew ahead of time that we had so much going into the uh, audio for the night that we would not have enough bandwidth for the live stream. And what we ended up doing was getting a hotspot, which worked. And I think you were talking about you are always trying to keep as, uh, the highest amount of bandwidth that you can. Can you just expand upon that a little bit? Yes, and anytime you go out and do remote, 
you're at the mercy of, of a number of things, whether it's the acoustics in the building or the lighting or the bandwidth. Uh, the reason that this last, on this last side that I ended up using my camera and, and not using my Mevo is that forum was in an auditorium. They had six or seven wireless mics going in the room and it affected my bandwidth, even though I was on a Verizon, what they call a uh, hotspot or jetpack. And I, I had tested it the week before in a different forum and I, it went through with absolutely no problem. So you always have to have backup. So what I ended up doing is not being able to go live because I didn't want to irritate our watchers by having the stream be dropping off all the time. So my backup was my iPhone and the little, that little guy. And so you always have to be aware at this point, um, maybe when 5G gets uh, ubiquitous over the country, it might be a little more dependable, but it's still fairly new technology. And, and as I said, you're at the mercy of the conditions that you go to you have much better control if you can get things to happen in your studio where you've got complete control over the audio and the acoustics and the bandwidth so when so when you use the um the little uh the, the smartphone microphone what's it called the, the sure it's the sure mv88 yeah. so when you use that you basically just continued with the audio but you the the the, the, vi the video part of it dropped out no, what I just, I reverted to using my phone and instead of taking pictures, I did video and then I uploaded the video to YouTube and from, and edited out a lot of dead air that happened and then uh, transferred uh, that video over to Facebook. Oh, so you did, you weren't live? No, I couldn't go live because it kept dropping off. Okay. And, and that's part, I mean, it was a large room. There were seven or eight mics, uh, wireless mics going. There were also a num uh, over 300 people in the room. And if they are accessing their phones, that will affect your bandwidth too. So sometimes at an event, you just make a decision to not go, to stop going live. Yes, because you don't want to be dropping off and having to be going back on. You might miss something important. And, uh, and especially in politics, it's kind of, like fishing, you know, when that magic moment happens, you want to be, you want to have it on, on your, on your, your video, if you've got it. So if, if you've got something, always be prepared for backup is, is my point. So how, how does that affect how you promote these things? If you're not sure it's going to be live or not? Well, uh, we, uh, we didn't advertise that we were going live. Uh -huh. uh, we didn't, we didn't have a commitment to the community that we were going live. But as soon as I got it uploaded, then I boosted that particular uh, link to that form that's on Facebook. And you can go to our Facebook page and see it. It's uh, WPBM in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, Culture and Arts of Asheville, basically, is how you're going to find it. And you can see. And then I, after I loaded it up to Facebook, I could boost it. And it went, and it went out to almost 3,000 people in the past four days. Can you talk a little bit about boosting it? Like what, how you decide what to do? Well, I've learned that uh, live music from a popular musician is a great way, is a great thing to boost because it's gonna get a lot of reach and engagement with the people who follow, who are fans of that musician. Uh, for community service events like uh, political forums, I might not get a lot of uh, really high number of reach and engagement, but I know that it's raising awareness of the movers and shakers in the community about the station and that we're doing public, public good for, this, for the community by uh, airing this in a way that people will see what is going on politically or see this, uh, the uh, platforms of people who are running for office that they otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to see. So it depends. I mean, if I feel like it's for the public good and it's going to make us look good. And I, even though I know it might not be the most popular thing in the world, I know that uh, people who are, 
people who are into uh, the power structure in the community are going to see what we're doing and they're going to be aware that we're there. So it's worth the money. It's worth 15 or 20 bucks to me to raise awareness. So, so, so you tend, so you approached promotion uh, more as boosting things that you already have there than, you know, uh, driving people to a live event. Right. I don't, I don't necessarily concentrate on living people, driving to people to a live event. I'm not sure that uh, it's that big of a deal because the advantage of things on social media and everywhere else is people can view, view it on demand. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a question about, um, Oh, uh, the phone cutting. Have you ever had a phone interview while you were doing live stream in the studio? Um, we have had some of our, our show hosts do. They, uh, they do backup of their show while they're live streaming using the Mevo camera. They'll, they'll do a backup video using their phone just in case something goes wrong with the live stream. Back, okay. Because we, I learned that our the live stream uh, with the audio was fine with people in the studio, but the people who called in were not plugged into the system and the Mevo did not pick it up. Um, so, so the way uh, we've got a um, accessory input on our board. So if people call in uh, to a number on someone's phone or computer, that phone is plugged into that accessory input. And then oh, okay. that way it goes in through the board. And the, okay. other thing that, the other thing that you can do is have your, have your caller uh, call in on a landline, preferably, or a high quality cellular connection, and just put the mic right, lay the phone down and put the mic right on top of it so that it picks up the audio from the mic that's going into your board. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I think that, I think, um, no, it's not going to show it on, on that video that I, that I mentioned that you all can go look at. That's our tutorial. I don't think it's there, but, but that's an easy fix. The easiest one is let it, just putting a, a, a mic up, or a phone right up to the mic. The second one is we had to have someone wire in an accessory input into our board. Does that okay. make sense? Uh, a little bit, but I think if I showed an engineer this video, they would understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they would. They would. They would understand exactly. Okay. And and um, uh, there would. I think I've got uh, on one of our tutorials how our accessory setup is done, but. Basically, he just carved a hole into our uh, the top of our broadcast console and set up a, another connection to the back of the board that just pay, you can they, so our guests can plug in or our host can plug in their computer to that using a audio jack or their phone or a pad. Okay, cool. Oh, we have a question from Joseph asking if you ever done this with local sports. No, because we have not that many um, volunteers that are out there doing sports, and we have three social, we have three low power FM stations in town, and so we don't have a lot of opportunity. We don't have a large audience to get out to 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 become part of WPVM, but we would love to, and it would work. You could do it very easily with the phone and the little MV88 like that, and it would work great. So when you use the MV88, you use the video from your cell phone? Yes. Instead of, I mean, you have the option with your cell phone, you could stream live, but uh, you also can use, you know, with your iPhone or your, your uh, smartphone, you have the option of taking pictures and videos and that sort of thing. So on my phone, I just stay, do a video instead of taking a picture. And, and instead of going live. And the reason that I did that last week was again, because I knew we were having such drop off problems that I was just safer. If I was gonna capture a good quality video to just do it on my phone and uh, upload and edit it and upload it later. 
Do you find that a lot of your producers want to stream live when they're doing oh, it? Yes. Well, if they're, yeah. if they're at all savvy, if they're not savvy, we have some that I've had to cajole into trying it uh, because, you know, it's work and it is, um, you have to be nimble. So not only are you, can in, because we don't have any producers that are helping a live show host. Uh, a couple of them have their own that they bring in, but in general, you're going to have to be working the board, doing your interview, and also prior to getting going, setting up that uh, Mevo camera to get going live. But the younger people have no problem doing it. If they've been in computers all their lives, they have no problem getting it all going. They'll, they'll pick it up in three or four sessions, and then they'll be just moving along very nicely. And the ones that want, the ones that are not afraid of the technology or tech phobic, they adapt to it and they really like it because it, it's another way of getting their message out. Do you ask them to stream to your Facebook page or do they have their own Facebook page? No, they, no they're in our station. They're using our equipment. They have to stream to our site on Facebook. So let me make a caveat here. You can't stream. Uh, you can't stream to social media music that is comes under any of the major producers because they haven't caught up yet with the fact that we have Sound Exchange and BMI and that we pay those licenses. This happened in the past, like eighteen months, that uh, copyright police will block the video. So, uh, so our show hosts that do well with music, they're playing local music or cover. So if somebody's music. playing music that is copyrighted, they can't stream it? No, they'll block you. So uh, do you ever do advertising on Facebook? Not really. I haven't delved into that at all. Mm-hmm. I know you could because it's not doesn't come under the same kind of uh, restrictions. It doesn't come under the same restrictions at all that we do on the radio. I just haven't I just haven't done it. And then how do you what how do you share what you're doing? I mean, how do you get it out other than posting it? Do you do you have like a a roster of other people's handles or how do you do that? Well, so each show is an individual thing, and so as I mentioned earlier the uh whoever comes on they need to have to make it work best for that particular show they also need to have a a uh, good social media uh, program that they're working too so that for example we had a uh the head of the local democratic party in this morning for an interview well she's active on social media and she can take that video from our page and share it to her page and all of her friends and fans and people who follow her will see that live video. So, so that's how you, that's how you spread the word is you're using, um, you're, you're using the advantage of your guests who, who come in, who have their own social media program to help raise awareness of that particular interview. This could be a good segue too for you, Ursula, to talk about the kindest program that you that we did. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure we don't have any other. People, sure. You know. Yes. Yeah, does anyone else have any other questions or anything they want to talk about? I don't see anything on the chat. Okay. Um, thank you, Devine. That I I'm so happy that I got a chance to try out that Mevo uh, live streaming. I thought it was so great, and I I'm hoping that we can keep up with it here at our station. Yeah, and it it is really an opportunity for our small stations to uh, take advantage of the fact that media is really changing, and I think it's an opportunity for us to become much more significant in the community based on what we can bring using that as a, a marketing tool. 
Yeah, thank you, Devine. Really appreciate it. I'll be um, back in a few minutes. I've got to run off for a second. I'll be back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, is is uh, Stephanie, is Ruth in the room? No, she's not. Okay. I think she might have went out for lunch. Okay. Um, well, um, We we were uh, we were approached by a um, a, a crowdsourcing uh, group called Kindest recently, and um, I don't I don't want to go into a great depth right now because I I don't know if 15 minutes is I I'm really kind of watchful of the time here, but I'll give a, a brief summary of it and if any of you are interested, um, I'd be happy to speak with you more about it. Um, but it is a relatively new uh, crowdsourcing site. Um, the, the thing that, there's a few things about it that I like better than the, um, than the more traditional ones. Um, one is that they don't, they don't take any money out of your, um, donations to, uh, to pay for their own site. And so everything that's donated to you goes to you. Um, they do ask for donations to their site. And um, I was a little bit skeptical about that when they told me that because I thought, well, how they said, well, we have a tip jar and that's what we use for our funding. And I thought, well, how does that work? But then when I saw when we actually used it, I realized that they're very, very good at getting that in there uh, into the formula quicker than, you know, they, 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 they leave no decision up to the donor. They basically make the request as part of the donation they add it on automatically and uh, you don't have to agree to it, but they certainly are aggressive about asking for it. So uh, that might turn some people off. I didn't find that it did turn anybody off. Um, you don't have to make the additional donation. Um, and then uh, what, what I, the other thing I like about them is that they're very proactive in uh, helping you set up. They have a very, very strong support team They'll get on the phone, they'll video conference with you or uh, telephone conference with you and talk you through every single thing you need to get set up or any questions you have, they'll spend a great deal of time with you. So they make sure that you get across the finish line with this. They kind of don't leave you on your own like I found um, Kickstarter did. They also don't require a video, so there's not this huge investment on the part of the station to you know, prepare, like we did, we did a Kickstarter campaign once and it was a tremendous amount of work just to, uh, you know, make the video and then get accepted. And they don't ask this, they just, you know, setting up the site is very easy. It's relatively intuitive. And um, it's a little bit funny because you don't log in like a traditional website, you log in through your own email. So it's a little bit funny because it's not a particularly public website. So I said, well, how do people find you then to donate? And they said, this is, you know, this is really driven by your campaigns. Like you let people know where to find the site. And so it's really campaign driven. It's not a public website where people go, I, I suppose you could find it publicly, but it's not that common. Um, the other thing I've gotten to like about them, which I didn't know about when we signed up, we signed up mostly because we thought it was a pretty website. We thought the tech support was good. And um, they seemed to be easy people to work with. Uh, but what I discovered about them is that they, peer, they are connected to a granting system of their own. And they regularly get grants from large donors. And then those, they use those grants for matching funds. And so they will very regularly have matching campaigns where they invite you to raise X number of dollars for them to match. And it seems like they're very, very active. They're more active in those areas than we can keep up with. Um, but both for KHOI and for uh, Pacifica, um, we, what, what happened was in um, December, they announced a thousand dollar matching initiative. And um, we needed a thousand. We needed a thousand. We needed money both for the KHOI and for Pacifica, and so 
we actually found in each case a donor who had a thousand dollars they were willing to donate and so automatically got a thousand dollars and that was a that was you know in our world and i'm sure in your world too that's a boost yeah so they um they do that and i i said to them how how are you able to do that and they said well we get grants and when we get the grants we turn those into matching incentives is that why they're called kindest because they can match things i <laughs> i don't know they they just I, that's just the name they chose i don't know i didn't know about the matching part of it that seems to be something they're cultivating so so I, I've noticed that almost every month they have some sort of promotional um, initiative that they do, and it pays off. I mean, we got we made a substantial amount of money um, from from our two efforts, and uh, usually what happens too is that when somebody sees that you got a substantial donation, other people pile on. So we ended up making more money. You know, we were aiming for 2000 in both cases, and we, in both cases, we made more money than that. They also make it extremely easy for you to thank people. It's all built into the website. They, they um, you know, set up those connections so that you can very easily email your donors and um, thank them. And also what's nice is that you can set up a, an account for your station and then um, set up separate project accounts that are associated with your station that are for individual initiatives. So my impression is that it's a really easy form of crowdsour crowdsourcing that is a little bit more user-friendly than most of the ones I've run across. I, I didn't like working with Kickstarter when we worked with them. I, I found it annoying and I also found that they, um, they sent too many emails to the people that donated to us and I have not gotten complaints from people that have donated to us from kindest um, I've not heard that they've been sending a lot of advertising to them um, I'm, I'm curious Mike did you ever get any do you ever get any emails from kindest asking for more donations Mike's not responding okay <laughs> he's <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't heard of anybody complaining about that. So I like that. It, um, uh, now, one thing nice about it, too, is that um, when you become their client, if you bring in other people, they give you money. So um, I'm actually probably going to write to people in Pacifica Network and ask if any of them are interested in this. I don't want to, you know... Um, I don't want to give any stations names to them um, without their permission because then it kind of creates a perception that we're selling our clients. But um, if we do find some stations in the network that want to try Kindest, we'll benefit from that. So that's kind of nice too. It's a little bit of a pyramid scheme type of thing. Um, so I, I have to say, having used them once, I would recommend them. I think it's worth it. And they, they um, you know, really um, kind of make the social networking part of it very easy for you. They kind of set it up for you. I think if you go to kindest.com, I think you can actually find them. Although, like I said, people usually find it through a, a link in an email. Does anyone have any other questions about today? about uh, streaming or the kindest? I, I'm curious, uh, Devine, do you, do you use um, Instagram? I do, I, I've, I've started using it and just with a really uh, high contrast graphic, uh, you, you really, uh, if you do video to it, it has to be very short, like 20 seconds or something. Uh, but I use Hootsuite and Hootsuite you can use, uh, you can post one time and it goes to, for us, it goes to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you, you do, you load things up for the future? No, not really. I haven't scheduled for the future. Mm -hmm. I just, cause you know, I, I, 
I try to I try to keep my eye out on really catchy things that will get people's attention because again, going back to my basic goal here is just to raise the awareness of about the station in the community. So I try to find catchy stuff, uh, and then whenever I see it, and I know that it's it's got. Uh, for example, here's one of the ones that I did. How Bluetooth came about. Bluetooth was a, a, a it's an interesting story. It's about this um, Norwegian or Scandinavian guy who ate a lot of blueberries. But <laughs> if you look it up, you'll see how it's connected to Bluetooth now. Well, that was a cute little story and it showed a picture of him and I put it on Instagram and Facebook and, you know, and people loved it. I didn't boost it or anything. It's just that, I try to find interesting little tidbits that will just amuse people or pro maybe provoke them or whatever. But that's what I do with it. That's how I do it. Yeah, once uh, a few years ago, we, we just spent a week just loading up Hootsuite uh -huh. out a year's worth of content. Really? It was, yeah, it was really great because um, these things, and that, like you said, they were just general comments about community radio. Yes. And it really was great because people really responded to it well and we would forget about it. Yeah, and, especially on Instagram. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that there's so many people who uh, respond to what we put on Instagram and I, uh, frankly, I don't quite get it, but they do. <laughs> We've got 600, 600 or 700 followers on Instagram that I didn't even try to get. Yeah. Yeah. So I just started recently working with it because I'm like, well, heck, <laughs> maybe maybe I should give them a little more attention than I'm giving them because it's out there. Okay. Well, I think uh, I think that's a I good word to end on. Yeah, I, I really appreciate your presentation today, Devine. That was that was uh, really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck with it all. It's a long learning curve, but it's yes. worth it. Yeah, I appreciate it too. I learn something new every time I watch one of your presentations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'll be putting this up on, what's that? I'm here to share. <laughs> well, this was a fun time and I'll be, I'll be posting this on the Pacifica Network page so more people can see it too. Uh, okay. I'll have it up by tomorrow. So thank you everybody. Thank you for joining. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Stuff.